Chloe Butchie by Scott. I am now. We're Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. We're on location, so this setup is really weird, but we're here. Um, we're visiting Nell's friend out in the country. We're staying in a and b five minutes away from her. We're going to see her and tomorrow. her family tomorrow. We've brought in a dog along with us and he's decided to snog through our filming. That's his favourite. He's so cute. I wish you could see him. He's curled up on the bed. He's claimed it as his own. He's decided that in this little cabin thing, the massive <laughs> people bed is his bed and the little dog bed is not his bed. Yeah, we can we can sleep in the dog cage. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't give a rat's way where he's sleeping. He's yeah. just like, this is mine, you guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So, uh, Friday Reads tradition is to start with a shout out. And yes. This week, I think our shout out should be DJ at Indian Cooks and Books. Okay. Uh, yeah, because he's got a good channel and more people should watch it. It's a very good channel. I really like the way he describes books. Yeah. Well, look, I think we've been watching it for about three or four weeks. Basically, Sean shouted DJ out three or four weeks ago, and we subscribed. I just, it's just such a good channel. Like, it's a really good channel. And there's lots of food stuff too. Um, I enjoy the food stuff. Oh, yeah. He's such a good cook. Um, just, I am always impressed when somebody cooks stuff that I'm like, I don't know how to do that. Like, like yeah. when they teach you stuff. In the yeah. kitchen, I'm yeah. very impressed. And DJ is a vegan, and he uses aquafaba in some of his ingredients, and that is um. And not something you've played with yet. Yeah, for people who don't know what aquafaba is, it's chickpea snot. Yeah, it's it's when you open a tin of chickpeas, it's the stuff that isn't chickpeas in the tin. It's the snotty stuff. Um, but you can you can use it to add protein to vegan dishes um, and make mayonnaise out of it and stuff. It's Yeah, a lot of like commercial vegan mayonnaise is made out of it. And it actually tastes good, which is shocking because... I mean, chickpeas are like the wonder food for vegans because not only... But it's not a chickpea. It's the snot around yeah. the chickpea. Like, it's disgusting. Yeah, you put them it's in like water. It's like eating some kind of fucking mucus. A shout out today is to chickpeas. Go chickpeas. Great for vegans. Um, you should start talking about your books because I'm going to do something I never do at home, but I'm going to pop off camera and get a glass of water. All right, I'm on my own. Um, I just want to quickly say I DNF'd two books last week, not this week, but I forgot to put them in the Friday Reads. I DNF'd The Godfather and I DNF'd uh, The Confessions of Franny Langton. Look at the, the water. It's weird. Show, show the camera. It looks like milk. But wait, look at it, look at it. See, it's just air. We better get it, it'll all be out. Oh, it's a little bit Seven books now. Seven books. Well, so, I read four, so... Well, the first of my books we both finished. We finally finished The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. No, what a cute ending! Cute? Cute! I thought it was cute. I know the thing with the report, whatever. I didn't even care. I didn't think that, that was... Oh, I thought it was one of those things, like, you're going to be so shocked. And you can never be shocked enough for that statement to be true. Yeah. Once they've, you know. Um, but I thought the way she lived out her life in the end was really cute. So it was cute. Oh, okay. Yeah. I... I may be misinterpreting what you're saying the ending is. Yeah, I feel like it ended quite a bit before it actually ended. Yeah. Yeah. What a cute final surge, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the stuff that was after the cute bit was fine. But not important to me. Yeah. I thought it was um it was fine. I didn't enjoy the beginning of it. I got into it. It was fine. Yeah. It wasn't it will never be a book that I particularly remember. To be fair. Yeah, um, I would totally remember it, but for a reason that will become clear later. Really? What's that reason? It'll become clear later. Um, yeah, so it was, it was good. It wasn't great. Yeah. Um, I finished a book club book, Men We Reaped by Jasmine Ward. Oh, I haven't even started it. Yeah, you better be going. I am a bad book club participant. All right, you can smash it out in a day. Did you bring it with you on location? No, I didn't. <laughs> bad book club participant. 
What else did you read? Oh, what um, did you think of it? Did you enjoy it? Is it good? Am I, I going to hate it? <laughs> um, so, what it is, is it's the memoir of this this girl who is um, black and her brothers who basically get killed in or die in various horrible crap ways. Not, not necessarily what you would think when I say that they died in horrible ways, but they died. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dog has apnea. <laughs> I feel like he's like saying, shut the fuck up. I'm to sleep. <laughs> are too loud. Jeez. <laughs> He's so funny. He's got attitude. Um, yeah. What was interesting about this was that at some point in this book, Jasmine gets essentially given free education and goes from being super poor and black to still being super poor and black, but having the privilege of money because of her education and then having the experience of racism in her school life um, and she grew grew up in the south and I uh, pretty much imagine it doesn't matter where you grow up if you're black you get racism thrown at you but I'm certainly sure that some places are worse than others as well Um, but the sort of racism she got and the sort of racism her brothers got were completely different Um, you know she got like the insults and the being picked on and all of that sort of stuff and her brothers just got like societal bullshit being crap to them and like not seeing them as human beings and you know yeah um yeah so i thought that was interesting um it was fine it was good Um, i mean you've given it four stars so it was a bit more than fine yeah I, i i didn't mean to write it off it's it's neither the best nor the worst of these sort of things. It was quite sad. Um, it would be very easy to cry in this book. Okay. Yeah. Um, La Bastarda by Trifonia Malabia Bono. Yeah. Obono. Um, this is my pick for Equatorial Guinea for the Invisible Cities which is, I think, about four months late, but yeah. whatever. I'm not, I'm not being stressed about uh-huh. timelines. Um, this was a bit of a slow burn, and it was a slow burn for a novella that was about 80 pages long. <laughs> um, the premise of this was this girl was a bastard, but she was a bastard because when she was born, her father had paid her mother's parents the dowry and then the mother died in childbirth and so the girl didn't have anywhere she belonged and because the dowry wasn't paid she by tradition goes back to the family of her mother right uh, and is raised there and, and basically she doesn't feel like she belongs anywhere and she's mistreated by everybody but on top of that her uncle is gay and she goes and visits her uncle uh, and she finds out that she might be a bit that way as well. So we have this interesting story about belonging anyway and then on top of it we have the layer of the LGBT stuff and it just sort of crept up on me this book that as the, the like it's quite a few layers for a novella really. Yeah. Um, and in the end I thought it was really good. That's good. Um, Right, then the second one we've both read Mm -hmm. is Second Place by Rachel Cusk. So we read this because uh, it's a book along listed and we're going to have a review of this. Yeah, we'll do a proper review of it, I think. Um, But, to cut a long story short, Mm. I agree with Nell's facial expression. It's terrible. Uh, I wouldn't say it's I mean, it's not without merit. Like, it's it's well constructed and I, I think it's doing what it intends to do. I just didn't fucking like it <laughs> like, yeah I think I think that this is when when the booker announces stuff on the long list this is exactly what you're scared of pretentious twat oh, twat or rather the thing that bothered me was not that the book itself was pretentious but the narrator was so pretentious as to be disengaged from the reality of her own life 
It's really interesting because the narrator is almost clearly, almost certainly an author, insert character. Like, they're. I'm always suspicious when the main character is an author. Yeah. But when the main character is an author who has divorced a banker and taken some money from the banker because of an error the banker makes, and that is basically taking. <laughs> like, that is. From the story, yeah. Like, um, you know, so, yeah, I. <laughs> I have a hard time believing that the, the, the protagonist is anything but Rachel Cusk. In which case, and Rachel Cusk needs to get into therapy because real yeah. people don't function like that. Yeah. I mean, this book is her therapy. Well, it's bad therapy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to completely judge the author. Completely... <laughs> it got a personal level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's what authors are afraid of when they write. Um, <clears throat> you know, the authors probably, if, if they're watching this, sitting there going, "These two idiots from Australia didn't get it." <laughs> Maybe I did it, but that's not me. That's my sister. We both married bankers. <laughs> anyway, um, Amnesty by Aravinda Adiga. Um, I stole this on uh, Stella's channel, Thirty Books. If you don't watch Stella and you like. Um, and you want you want more Aussie literature, Aussie book recommendations in general. Um, you just need to watch like that's what she does. And yeah. she's quite she's got a personality on her, and she's great. Um, so watch her channel. Um, but I saw her review Amnesty by um, Aravinda Adiga, and this is the story of a illegal immigrant in Australia. And, and when I say illegal immigrant, I mean they've overstayed their visa and. They're actually illegal. It's not a... a but little... People aren't illegal. But yes, yeah, they're here yeah, illegally. I know, I know. But it, it is a term that is so often misused in Australian politics. But actually, it is the correct term this time. And I just wanted to draw that line. Um, he is terrified that the cops will find out what he's doing and send him home, essentially. Yeah. And so this sounds like an interesting story. And then he has information on a murder. And he doesn't want to help the cops with the investigation of the murder because it will affect his residency in Australia. Right. And it's a really interesting conflict. Um, in Adiga's last book that I read, The White Tiger, I felt that he had a really comical tone to it, which didn't quite work for the novel that he was writing. It was funny, but I just I didn't think it quite... <laughs> In. Yeah. in this, Danny has the comical tone and early on it works. And by the way, I loved Danny. I loved Danny from the moment that he criticised white people for eating broccoli because I hate broccoli. I'm, down. I'm with you, Danny. You really love uh, any kind of criticism of white people that you feel you're exempt from, <laughs> don't you? You're like, yes! I'm not one of those white I'm people. I'm not one of them broccoli eating <laughs> white people. Utter, utter <laughs> fuck with it. Just... <laughs> I know I'm, I, I'm. I'm actually just with Danny because I hate broccoli so much. Yeah, okay. I really hate broccoli and cauliflower. They're just horrible vegetables. Uh, it should be like eradicated. Anyway, um, what's really interesting is that Adiga's style, the comedic style, he's able to just vary that just a tiny bit, and it becomes really bombastic, and it really, um, really gets inside the head of how Danny's feeling. He's stressed out. He's nervous. He's paranoid. Everybody is a cop. Everybody's going to tell on him. Everybody can see that he's an illegal and he's freaking the fuck out. And you have his internal monologue, which at the start of the book is being a smartass and funny. It just twists into this... Mania. Mania. And it's really well done. Mm, sounds good. Um, yeah. It, it's For me, it got a bit too bombastic and I found it a little bit confusing as to... Well, that's clearly not going on, but I thought that that was actually happening. But <laughs> clearly that didn't happen. So. Oh, wait, we're in a delusion. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that's the issue I had with it. It's the reason why I've only given it four instead of five stars. But I think other people will not have that issue. Um, and I think, that, um, I think that this is infinitely better than The White Tiger. Sorry. Um, yeah, infinitely better than The White Tiger, which... Um, I never won anything, didn't it? The White Tiger. Um, Thomas Hardy, The Woodlanders, um, is, I would 
would say this is this is a reread, and I'd say that the first time I read this, this was my least favorite Hardy novel. And as I'm rereading his works and trying to get through them all to, to get to the end, um, I still think that this is a bad Hardy book, to be honest. Um, and you know, when you reread, you read something and you think maybe I was having a bad day and it'll improve. And then I've reread this, and I still am not sure that I wasn't having a bad day because I read this in basically two sittings, and day two was infinitely better than day one, and and I, I can't decide whether that was the end, and then sort of I got all the payoff in that, or if you were just having a better day, or if I was just having a better day. I feel like that's happened twice for me, but I really think that this is. I feel like this is a novel. I feel like Hardy has given out his plot and he's gone, hey, you, apprentice, I'm going to sit over you and watch what you do. That's like it, because it is clearly Hardy, but it is just not his usual stuff. Yeah, okay. Um, and the last book I finished was also for, um, for the Booker Prize is Light Perpetual by Francis Spufford. Um, so this one is the one where a bomb goes off in London and kills five children. And then we go, but what if it didn't kill those five children? And then it follows the life of these five children from 1944 up until present time where, you know, they start to die. Um, I thought that this was quite a good book. Is it a real bomb and a real five children or is it a fictional bomb and a fictional five children? I think it's a fictional bomb and a fictional five children. Okay. But, I mean, it could have been a real bomb and a real... Like, London was bombed by the by the Nazis and children did die because of the bombing. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. So, I, I don't feel like... It, yeah, but they haven't, like, found a specific instance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. And, I mean, they're, they're predicting their life forward. So, it's... I mean, it's it's fiction. Yeah, but its starting point doesn't have to be fiction for it to be fiction. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if the the five names they picked were were real or not. Yeah. Okay. Um, I thought that there was some really good stuff in this book. There was two examples of mental illness discussed in a really interesting and different way. Um, there was. It felt very much like Zadie Smith's white teeth in that it was almost like a portrait of the UK over the years through these five people. Um, and I thought one of the things that was really interesting was the way that they accelerated the timeline so much in that one of the characters looked at a woman and then 30 years later and they're talking about their divorce from this woman that the last time you saw them they just saw them for the first time. You know, yeah. Um, so that was interesting. Um, I think that this this is quite a competent, quite a good novel. I think that this will get a lot of love on BookTube. Um, I will say that there is some fat phobia in it. Great. Um, Looking forward to that. But you know, just your run on the mill fat phobia. The the fat character is the asshole. Oh yeah. You know, pretty standard. I'm really happy with fat people being assholes because. <laughs> You deserve it as a world. Like, <laughs> like legitimately, if you're mean to me enough, I'm going to be mean back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I get what you're saying, but it would be nice to have some fat people not be either Santa Claus or the school bully. Yes. Yes, that would be nice. Um, yeah, maybe they could... Um, be human beings. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I thought it was... It was competent, it was fine, it was interesting... It is not the best book I've read. It is, well, it, you know, but it's, it's in the top 50%. Like, I gave it four stars. It was good. It. Yeah. Know. All right. That is my fucking plethora of shit long books. What, what have you got? Uh, the two that I read that were different from books that you read, I read um, Binti. I finally read Binti. Binti was awesome. I read it in one sitting. I stayed up to like two in the morning. It was ridiculous. You started at like midnight. Yeah, <laughs> like I picked it up when I should have been going to sleep and then I had stayed up half the night and finished it. Um, Wicked Story 
Wicked Central character, it was just too short. I want like a whole. I want more. There is more. Yeah, I, I understand that there's a series. But I don't want it as a series. I wanted it. You want it as a big book? Yeah, I wanted a big fat book that told me much more about this central character because. I just, I felt like it was a taste now. I felt like it was a commercial. Like there was just not enough. But it was, there was nothing, I, I would say nothing bad about it. It was really entertaining. Um, all the characters and all the world and everything that has been created so far is super interesting. Um, now tell me, I've seen this on a few people's channels and it looks really good, but it also does not look like a Scott book. It's not a Scott book, it's science fiction. Like, but I can like science fiction. It's good science fiction. Oh, well, it's short. I think I'll give it a shot. Yeah, I think you like it. I, I, honestly, I think it would depend on where it goes as a series because I suspect it's going to be the, about the development of the Big D character. Um, you can already see an arc sort of happening. But that's what I mean by it's not long enough. You can mm. see the start of an arc in this book. And... And then it's finished. Then it's finished, and you're like, now I have to get the next book to see how his character develops. And that is being skilled at capitalism, but not necessarily skilled at literature. Yes. <laughs> um, and that annoys me. Yes, um, that said, I will almost definitely get the second one. Um, but I might already know. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I read was The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey. Um, again, I smashed this out really quickly. It was um, a good fun read and I thought it was quite light. It, weird, like it's not, it's not like subject matter, but I thought it was, you know, not super layered or super rich in themes. And then I got to the end and like all of a sudden my brain caught up with what the author was doing and I realised that it was actually like this rich tapestry that was talking about really hardcore things like grooming and abuse and control and manipulation and narcissism and like victim abuser cycles and all of these things. And it's actually fucking awesome but it didn't hit me until I literally like I finished the last page and then my brain went oh um, and I don't I'd be interested if it hit anyone else like that or if I was just having a day <laughs> um, but it really like as, as I read it it read like a thriller really so it was really like enjoyable and whipped from start to finish but had a lot in it sounds like a thriller like yeah, the premise is that this, this like renowned scientist who creates the ability to imprint personalities onto clones, her husband steals the technology that she creates to create a clone of her that is more obedient and more domestic, essentially, less career driven. Um, and he secretly creates his clone and then he leaves her for her clone. And that's like the setup of the story. Which is an interesting sort of feminist conundrum, you know, do you be the 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 domestic versus the career and yeah. and all that sort of conundrum. And that's what I sort of expected it to be a discussion of. And while there is discussion of that, the real discussion is about how the characters control each other and manipulate each other and groom each other for abuse. That sounds really quite literary for a lady who writes about hippos in the wild west you've got to stop assuming that because there's hippos in the wild west there's no literature I'm, I'm, like I'm i mean sorry. Yeah, clearly fair, fair <laughs> where hippos go literature follows it's just facts facts are facts <laughs> facts are facts okay just ask me any card um yeah well uh, I just, yeah, I'm, I'm guilty of judging a book by its hippos. You are. You are. You're so judgy of, like, the the sci-fi fantasy shit that I read. And some of it is just escapist fun. But a lot of it is at least attempting to convey some kind of thematic tapestry. 
Yes. Yes. And this I, one I, I just don't think, disagree with what you just said. Yeah, I just think this one just did it really well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I am judgy too, but Yeah, you're so that's fine. That's fine. Um Yeah. I think we're done. We're done. I hope everyone's having a good week. Okay. Love you. Bye. Bye.